Should you be using a body oil to get glowing skin? Is it better than a lotion? We're gonna tackle these topics in today's video. Well, hey guys, welcome back. I know you appreciate the benefits of consistently moisturizing your skin in terms of reducing water loss, improving the moisture content, that smooths out fine lines, and it just keeps your skin on track for having optimal barrier function to protect you from irritating things getting out and to hold that hydration in the skin. When you go into the store, you are met with thousands of moisturizing options, and it can be really difficult to choose what is going to be the best. Should you do a lotion, a cream, a serum? And then you have the category of body oil. Many people swear up and down by body oils. They claim they are the secret to radiant glowing skin, but are they really that great? Are they better than just choosing a basic moisturizing lotion or cream? Or maybe you should use both. Well, let's talk about what exactly an oil is and what it does for your skin. Oils are emollients. They slip and slide on the skin surface and a little bit down into the epidermis. It's the top part of the skin and they smooth the skin surface. They smooth and they lubricate. If there is any skin that is trying to flake off mature corneocytes that need to shed and exfoliate, oils, they slip in between and they allow them to lift off more efficiently. But if you look to a moisturizing lotion or a cream, it's going to have oils in it, which are emollients, but it's also going to have other ingredients that in total pack a very full punch of moisturizing benefits. It's going to have humectants, which are ingredients that help with hydration in the skin. And it's also going to have occlusive ingredients that ultimately help reduce water loss. In contrast to a moisturizing lotion or a cream, an oil by itself really just helps to soften the skin. It does not help to reduce water loss and it doesn't really help to retain moisture in the skin. To a certain extent it may, but it's not going to pack the full well-rounded punch of a well-formulated moisturizing lotion or cream. Now, does that mean oils are completely useless? No. When we're talking about body oils, they're going to contain one or multiple different types of natural plant-derived oils, like coconut oil, sunflower seed oil. You'll get into some very exotic oils from a lot of body oil products. And these plant oils, they offer some potential benefits to the skin in that they likely contain different compounds that could potentially provide some benefit to your skin antioxidants, namely, which could help in reducing the burden of oxidative stress that your body skin experiences upon exposure to environmental stressors like ultraviolet radiation from the sun, pollution, infrared radiation. All of these things contribute to weathering of the skin and premature skin aging. Plant oils contain lipids that can help support the lipid structure of your skin and your skin barrier. While today's video is focused on body oils for glowing skin and for moisturizing, I will also point out that oils can be super helpful in cleansing the skin. There are even a category of products, which we're not going to get into in today's video, known as cleansing oils. But if you've ever used, say, a really uh, good water-resistant sunscreen or you've worn a full face of heavy makeup, you know it can be hard to get that off with just a little cleanser and water. An oil can help slip in there and dissolve that residue of either water resistant sunscreen or just heavy makeup and it just make it a lot easier to remove. I already kind of alluded to this, but oils can be very beneficial for exfoliating dry flaky skin. Rubbing oil on the skin surface can help those corneocytes that are trying to slough off more efficiently do so because the oils slip in between and allow things to lift off. But in contrast to trying to scrub, sand, buff away that flaky stuff, an oil, not only does it nicely kind of lift things up and allow them to naturally shed, but it doesn't really agitate the skin barrier like sanding, buffing, and scrubbing would. So it's actually an underutilized way to exfoliate dry, flaky skin. Personally, I love using a little touch of oil on my lips when they get really dry, chapped, and flaky. I'm never gonna use a lip scrub. Those are ridiculous. A little bit of oil achieves the desired outcome of removing the flaky stuff, but it doesn't leave the lips prone to more evaporative water loss, like what would happen if you tried sugaring away or sanding away the flaky stuff. So that's really a scenario where, in my experience, my opinion, oils can definitely be helpful. Some of the downfalls, though, of relying on oils for your moisturizing package is that as I kind of mentioned earlier, they don't really pack the full punch in that you're not getting necessarily optimal 
uh, humectant activity, you're not getting optimal occlusive activity. Really what you're getting is just the emollient effects and that gives you some immediate gratification in terms of the aesthetics of the way the skin looks. It kind of gives the skin that glowy look just as the oil on the skin surface reflects light and makes things appear smoother. But if you're truly looking to reduce, improve uh, dry skin, oils by themselves are really not where it's at. A moisturizing lotion or a cream formulated with all of the ingredients, the humectants, the emollients, which include oils, and the occlusives really can help reduce water loss from the skin and ultimately really help with dry skin more on a long-term basis. Like oils, using a moisturizing lotion or cream consistently actually can help your skin naturally exfoliate a little bit better. And moisturizing lotions and creams, in contrast to an oil, they they also do this, A, because they have the oils in there to soften and smooth and slip between the cells, but they also have humectants that help improve the water content of the skin. And that water content is really a key aspect of your skin biology's natural turnover processes and the natural exfoliation. When the water content in the top layers of the skin is low, uh, those enzymes don't perform as efficiently. And as a result, you can get a slowing of exfoliation and a buildup of dry rough skin that leaves the skin looking like it's got dry, dull, rough texture. If you have an impaired skin barrier, say as a result of an underlying skin condition like atopic dermatitis, or you've been overdoing it with skincare products, an oil by itself is not really going to necessarily get you relief, get you to improvement very quickly. In fact, as we'll get into in a moment, you may find that it actually worsens things for you depending on the oil that you're using. Whereas using a moisturizing lotion or a cream, the occlusive properties almost step in like second skin to help reduce the water loss and prevent irritating things from getting in. The humectants help with restoring the water content there, which is deficient when the barrier is impaired and ultimately just gets things back on track. The other issue that you can run into with oils is there's a lot of variability from different types of oils in terms of the constituents, as well as a lot of variability from brand to brand, batch to batch, uh, time of the year that it's harvested, region of the world where the particular oil is harvested. All of these things can actually influence the performance of an oil. Oils in the absence of preservatives can also go rancid. They can degrade and become very irritating to the skin. This is especially something you might want to consider if you are using more natural plant oils that are not formulated in a skincare product and they don't necessarily have the preservatives to keep them stable. That being said, you can buy body oils in the store these days that are formulated with preservatives in them. I'm just talking about like if you went to your health food store or your grocery store and picked up an oil uh, not meant for the skin and you tried using that as your moisturizer, uh, long term you may run into issues with it degrading and becoming more irritating for you. And in my tenure on YouTube, there have been hundreds of different oils that have come and gone in terms of popularity. Very few to none of these oils have really any research to back their usage in skincare. Now, there are a few exceptions where we do have a bit more research, although again, it is still pretty limited. Let's talk about olive oil. Hello, JLo. JLo claims that olive oil is the secret to her glowing skin. Olive oil is liquid fat derived from pressing olives. The predominant fatty acid in olive oil is oleic acid. But is olive oil actually that good for the skin? Both the research that we have as well as clinical experience don't really support using olive oil as a moisturizer. When olive oil was applied to newborn babies for four weeks, they actually had evidence of disrupted lipid orientation in the stratum corneum, suggesting barrier impairment in contrast to newborn babies who use nothing. And so that kind of speaks to the fact that maybe the olive oil is actually disruptive to the skin barrier. Moving forward, we actually have studies in adults that also support that olive oil applied to the skin can disrupt the skin barrier, probably because of its oleic acid content is disruptive to the lipid orientation. Now, a lot of moisturizers on the market will have olive oil in them as an emollient. Is that bad? Is that going to disrupt the skin barrier? No, when olive oil is in a moisturizing lotion or cream, 
it seems to be just fine. So don't worry about olive oil in your moisturizing lotions and creams, but all that to say, I would caution you against going to the grocery store and buying olive oil and putting it on your skin. It may actually end up leading to more water loss, more dryness, more irritation for you. Now, of course, there are probably tons of people out there who have been using olive oil on their skin every single day and their grandmother used it, and that's wonderful. But when you're coming here asking me my opinion on olive oil for the skin, I'm gonna lay it out for you in that there's just no evidence that it's helpful and the research and clinical experience we have actually suggests that it's not very good for your skin. Then we have coconut oil. I swear a few years ago, people on social media were singing the praises of coconut oil for just about everything. When it comes to oils that you might apply to your skin, coconut oil actually has more research to support it as being helpful. Coconut oil has high levels of lauric acid and muristic acid, not super high levels of oleic acid, which is thought to be disruptive. When coconut oil was applied to premature infants twice a day for seven days and then daily thereafter, they actually had overall much less transepidermal water loss in comparison to not using anything. Coconut oil as a moisturizer has also been examined in people who have atopic dermatitis. This is a skin condition where inherently you have an impaired skin barrier that is prone to water loss and flares of itchy, dry, irritated, inflamed skin. And coconut oil, both in children and adults, Adults has been shown to reduce dryness and eczema severity in clinical studies. When coconut oil is applied to the skin of adults with atopic dermatitis, it's actually been shown to reduce the burden of colonization with Staphylococcus aureus bacteria. And if you know anything about atopic dermatitis, the skin, it becomes inflamed, the barrier is impaired, and it's prone to becoming colonized with staph bacteria that subsequently make the skin condition even worse. There are derivatives of coconut oil that are found in personal care products. Cocomethyl propyl betaine, a mild surfactant frequently found in like tear-free shampoos, and cocomide diethanolamide. Both of these are safe ingredients in personal care products, but they are potential allergens. People can become sensitized to them and then have an allergy to them, they have to avoid them. People who have sensitivity and allergy to the coconut oil derivatives, when they're tested to coconut oil, pure coconut oil, they seem to have no problem with it. Sunflower seed oil is another more extensively studied oil for dry skin at least and atopic dermatitis. The research on sunflower seed oil is a bit mixed in terms of its benefits for the skin. It has about 60% linoleic acid in it, which is a fatty acid that's actually very important in skin barrier integrity. And some research suggests that linoleic acid may have some anti-inflammatory effects when applied to the skin. The research by and large is not conclusive as to whether or not it truly is beneficial or superior to just moisturizers. Some studies suggest there's no difference in transepidermal water loss using sunflower seed oil versus nothing. Other studies show benefit for people who have atopic dermatitis. One study shows an improvement in uh, neonatal infections when using sunflower seed oil as a moisturizer. So all that to say, it's very difficult to draw solid conclusions, but you'll find sunflower seed oil uh, as an emollient in a lot of moisturizers and moisturizing lotions. All right, so all that to say, should you be using a body oil for glowing radiant skin? If you want to, I would not suggest using a body oil as a standalone moisturizer. I think a moisturizing lotion or a cream is a much better option because it presents a full package of moisturizing ingredients that can really support getting your skin barrier back on track. This is especially going to be helpful for those of you who have dry skin conditions or issues related to your skin barrier, like atopic dermatitis, or again, maybe you've just been using too many skincare products. Body oils will make your skin appear radiant and glowing by light scattering, but are they really the secret to radiant glowing skin? In my opinion, no, because they kind of lack in the department of hydration and reduction in water loss. I think by and large, the results that people see with body oils are sort of temporary. I don't think they're a great option by themselves for truly addressing the needs of dry skin and issues around the skin barrier, but they certainly can be beneficial for helping to exfoliate dry flaky skin. So I encourage you to lean into them in that regard. Just rubbing a little bit of a body oil over dry skin, I think is a much better way 
to exfoliate than the popular dry brushing trend, which can actually aggravate water loss from the skin. What if you wanna use both? Honestly, there's not really any research to show that using both an oil, then a lotion or a cream adds anything special to your skincare routine. But if you wanna use a body oil, I suggest applying it to the skin after bathing to clean skin, while the skin is still a bit damp, massaging it in, and then applying a moisturizing lotion or a cream to really seal everything in. Which body oil should you choose? It's really up to you. There's so many out there, and many of them have multiple different oils in them as part of their makeup. All right, y'all, so that is body oils versus body lotions and creams. I hope this video was helpful to you. Let me know in the comments, do you use a body oil? Do you find it beneficial in your routine? Now, if you're looking to improve hydration in your skin, which ultimately is gonna help smooth out fine lines, it's gonna reduce dryness, help with barrier function, help keep the skin exfoliating on track, you're gonna wanna check out my video on how to hydrate your skin this summer. I'm gonna put it on the end slate, so watch that one next. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.